I got love for you, man. You know what, I'm <laughs> what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take this serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that, out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you without a strong rhyme to step to. Many apologies for the long absence in podcasting. The audience has spoken, and I'm listening. I'm back in the studio. The day job had me bouncing all over the place. And I'm, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just telling you a little bit about uh, what the summer has been like. Uh, and I'm very sorry uh, that uh, I haven't been able to provide countless minutes of stupid conversation, my dumb laughter, and uncomfortable pauses. Um, uh, so I've been all over the place annoying all kinds of nice people. Uh, nice people at the Calgary Stampede. That wasn't the day job. Um, that was like the superhero side job. So big thanks to Dave Andrew Wilder, Jim Taylor, and Nigel Downer. Uh, uh, the other superhero that I roll with, and uh, Hotel Arts, our layer. In my absence from there, uh, I uh, or from here, I annoyed a nice giant named Shaquille O'Neal in Toronto, a bunch of NHL draft picks in our TSN social lounge. I annoyed John Bones Jones when he came to Toronto to announce a fight in September. Uh, I picked him up from the airport. I annoyed Adrian Peterson at a football camp just north of Dallas, uh, we raced on kids' bikes. It was pretty awesome. I annoyed a few thousand people on Instagram with my food pics. My um, younger brother included, Mike Richards. Uh, hashtag fat guys love food. I annoyed Joe Flacco, Terrell Suggs, Colin Kaepernick, Adrian Peterson again, Mark McMorris, Joffrey Lupul, Jacoby Jones, and my co-host, Aaliyah Jasmine, on the uh, SB's red carpet in Los Angeles. Uh, more recently, I annoyed about 10 CFL dudes on a recent trip uh, to Edmonton, Calgary, and Regina, shooting three segments, the cold tub, helmets, and family jewels. And most recently, I annoyed Wiz Khalifa and Kendrick Lamar. Some hip-hop dudes. Okay, I'm done. My guest today is in the studio. I'm going to turn them up in the headphones. Here we go. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. The first time I met this young man was a couple of years ago on a random Monday night in the dead of summer at the Thompson Hotel here in Toronto. It's the only Monday night spot. And at the time, his mystique was building and, and the Thirsty Leafs Nation was demanding that he be playing for the big club. Two years later... Nazim Kadri gave the fans what they wanted, a point-a-night player with video game-like skill and a personality. His teammate has told me on multiple occasions, I'm talking about James Van Riemsdyk, he describes him as a beauty. I'm pleased to be welcomed by Nazim Kadri to the podcast. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thanks for having me. So, um, uh, I know there are like, I feel like there are like 10 or 12 of you NHL dudes that live in London in the... Actually, most recently, your uh, new teammate Dave Boland just bought a place there. Like, what, what, it, what is it in the water, or what do, you, what is it that you <laughs> like that they feed the girls in uh, London, Ontario? That is is so, uh, it's so magnetic for NHL dudes. Uh, I don't know, man. I guess it's just the atmosphere, really. I think, uh, you know, I think just you know a lot of people growing up there and and you know played junior hockey there, and it's such a hockey crazed town that you know a lot of people like to go back so um you know there's a lot of us there's probably about uh you know over 10 of us that live there i just like i think it, okay jeff carter's a place yeah. Corey perry logan couture brendan prust drew dowdy drew dowdy yourself B boland boland who else is out Prusty's there Prusty's out there yeah um i feel like 
Who else? Is it? It's like basically the guys that play on uh, on Drew's uh, yeah, softball. Yeah, we could definitely have an all star London team for sure. <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I I listen. London is very fun, and I've been there several times. And and like random times where my boys like, you want to just do a London run, and we'll just go <laughs> do a London run. And then at one thirty seven, I'm sleeping in the front of Joe Cool's. <laughs> it's worth it though, man. It really is. It really and, you, is. and and it's worth the drive for those five dollar pizzas at uh, Little Caesars yeah, afterwards. The, the hot and ready. That's what we like. That's what we like to call them down in London. Now, how much time do you spend between London and Toronto? Um, to, to be honest, most of my time spent here, I mean, uh, in Toronto. yeah, in Toronto. So, um, you know, I go back to see some family and friends and, you know, during, obviously all my friends are going to school and, and, you know, in the summertime it's, you know, I get more of the opportunity to go out and see them and, um, you know, go out with them a little bit. So I, I enjoy my time down there, but f for the most part, I'm down here. Now for those, uh, like American listeners, London, Ontario is two hours west of Toronto. So it's. Uh, it's not quite a suburb, but it's still very suburb. But, it, but it's like a it's a growing city. It's probably what two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand people. I think. I think there's more than that. More I think than it's that. Close to half a million now, man. And it and it is home to probably the best party city in our <laughs> our party uh, school in our whole country, which is the University of Western Ontario. That's right. Just known as Western. Uh, one story that I like to tell my dudes is when I was in high school, when I was in when I was seventeen, I went to Western. And uh, and uh, I, I, dro I can't remember who I drove with, but just two of us. We drove, uh, I lived in Cambridge, Ontario, so it was like one hour west to London. And, you know, I was in high school. I didn't have that much money. I maybe had 40 bucks in my pocket. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's all you need. And, like, the, the thing that I'd like to tell, like, when I came back is, I woke up in Soggy and Maitland Hall. <laughs> so Soggy and Maitland was the, is the residence, and it's it, hopefully with clothes on. Right. Well, I I woke up in some girl's room, and I, I like, and this 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 I, they used to call it back then j the jungle. I don't know what they call it now, but each floor has like subfloors. So if you go to eight, there's like there's like eight A, B, and C. I don't know what, what the floors are called, but there's like every floor has like three floors. And I woke up in some. I'm not saying the girl was cute. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, <laughs> we'll save that for another day. Right, but I'm just did that. That was like that felt like victory for me at 17 because, you know, when you're in high school, older women have this mystique. It's like, dude, she was in grade 11 yeah. when you're like grade 10. Like, yeah, she's got a license already. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she can drive, dude. Yeah. So, um, yeah, London, Ontario. Now, when I, the cool thing. Okay, you say you you spent some, you spent a lot of your time here in this in the um, in the summer. The cool thing that I, I like to see is when when you guys go out. I like to I like seeing that there's like a whole squad of you guys. Like by you guys, I mean like your team. So you guys will enjoy your night or whatever. It's like you know. Whether it's like the dead of summer, like right now, or it's you know the beginning of the summer, or whatever it is, but like you guys, there'll be a good eight to ten of you dudes together. And uh, did you did you know that it was what were your expectations like when you were coming to play for the Toronto Maple Leafs? As far as how the team uh, bonded, you know, I, as I progressed, as the years went on, uh, the teams got closer and closer. To be honest, I mean, when I first showed up, I, I didn't really. Um, you know, feel that that there was too much chemistry in the dressing room, and oh, okay, yeah. Now, now we got, you know, we're, I think we're the second youngest team in the league, but uh, we're still a good team, and and there's a lot of guys that like to come out and, and have some fun, but take care of business at the same time, which is cool. Like, is, um, I mean, I, I don't see everybody out, but like, it's a, it's like the main core of of your crew is out, and you guys, I guess you, say, yeah, I guess that that helps if everybody's kind of young. And you have you do have like a bunch of young studs in that. Oh, just... definitely, definitely. So okay, so you, okay. Speaking of young, why does why does why do you think JVR refers to you as a beauty? Why? Um... He says you. He says because <laughs> <laughs> have mean... you have you had a five minute conversation with him before? I'm like, no, I haven't actually. Because he's just a beauty. Yeah, just he's. A... I mean, Reams is a good guy too. He's he's. I I definitely give him the beauty status as well, <laughs> and, and a lot of other guys on our teams too. But I mean. You know, I can't take all the credit. So, do they um, ever put? Do they ever put like gel in his hair? Because his hair is very, <laughs> like it just. It's we, like it's. He's it's, got a mop. We yeah. just call it the mop. <laughs> Does he ever try to style? Like, can he style it? I think yeah. I went to Vegas with him early on in the year, and that's kind of when uh, you know he's kind of coming coming out to play in Toronto. Usually, it's he's either wearing a hat, or it's just kind of going. Uh, 
you know, just going it just every, flops. Yeah, just going everywhere. And it doesn't it doesn't move. It's like it just it <laughs> it's just, just boom there. right it's there. Just there. So wait, in Vegas he actually like yeah. he put like a like a like a comb over or he put like he uh, made it spiky or what did no, he do? He was, he was looking fresh in Vegas. I gotta give him some credit. What now. did he do to his hair though now? He just kind of I don't did a little something. I actually watched him put some product in his hair because I, I really <laughs> never seen it before. I was kind of astonished, so I, I just wanted to watch and see, uh, you know, maybe take a couple pointers. And I don't know, he just did a couple little things with his hands, and the next thing you know, it was up and ready to go. I don't I don't think you need pointers. <laughs> and what what was his style game like? Uh, Reams Reams is simple. Very, okay, yeah, so it's he, like simple. So like, it's like a blue collared shirt. And some jeans? Yeah, something like that. I mean, he doesn't go really too outside the box oftentimes, but uh, no, he's he's got good style. I got to give it to him. Did you see what, um, like, I don't know how you feel about hipster culture or these fashion forward athletes. Like now, because you're a professional athlete, you get, you're get you going to get lumped into this group of pro athletes and maybe not this smaller subsection that I'm going to get into of, like, guys who are really fashion forward, like Dwayne Wade. <laughs> or um you know or James Harden or um Nick Young who yeah. had I remember one of his shirts at a press conference was like was dude, so much aggressive style oh so much and 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 the dude who is like carrying the the mantra who's like who's like the Kanye West of of sports as far <laughs> as like being so far out there is Russell Westbrook. Did you see what he wore to yeah, the uh I did. I the did. Teen he's, Choice Awards? He's definitely got some unique style, but I mean I mean I don't know if that's all him or has he got like a stylist. Probably is a stylist, doing? but he still has to agree to wear it. Yeah, it's true. He probably gets the final say, right? The right. dude the dude was looking like a Star Trek character <laughs> in like uh but it like in another dimension. Like he for those who haven't seen this photo, he's wearing it looks like a onesie. Yeah, it and came it, from another planet or something. And I don't it's know. it's like a capri style, so it's tight. It's got a lowered crotch. It's it's got like um, I think it's sleeveless. It's white. It's got some black horizontal <laughs> stripes. Aggressive to say the least. I, I gotta I gotta find it here. But he that dude. Um, uh, I don't, have you what? How far out on a limb do you go as far as your style goes? I mean, I'm a pretty simple guy as well. I mean, I don't I don't like. Uh, there it is. Eh? Yeah. Wow. So 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 <laughs> uh, Russell Westbrook is wearing like, it's like a white camouflage. Has like a white camo print, uh, his top. It's got like almost looks like a bib, and uh, it's got a collar, but it's it doesn't have any. Uh, I don't know. It's like a it's like a collar. Uh, would you even that say like that's a collar? It's I kind know, of. I don't even know if you consider that a collar. The only thing I, I'm kind of feeling right now is his shoes. <laughs> his shoes are all right. I think I might wear those. He's got these gray. Uh, I they don't look, even know. They kind of look like Jordans a little bit. Kind of. But High got, tops. Yeah, but he's got these white pants that are tight, but then they have that lowered crotch. So, okay, would you would you go anywhere? Like, how close to this would you go? Yeah, I don't think you would pay me to wear something like that. So, like, I don't know if I could. I uh, like I said, man. The only thing I'm I'm feeling is his shoes. Other than that, I, I think we could scrap scrap it all. Are you one of those dudes that you know how dudes wear their like they f wear button ups all the way to the top button and no tie? Do you yeah. wear that? No, do you have any shirts like I, that? I don't know. That's not really my style. Usually, I'm I'll, I'll definitely undo a couple buttons <laughs> instead of doing them up. So I think that's that's more uh, me. And uh, it, 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 he, there, he was pictured with uh, Miley Cyrus at the Teen Choice Awards. I think she won some some awards. And Miley Cyrus is like so popular right now, so much more popular because Jay Z mentions her in uh, I can't remember which track, but in uh, Magna Carta, Holy Grail, is twerk Miley, Miley twerk, and she had that famous video where she was just twerking yeah, for I was like just gonna say <laughs> for like ninety seconds. Absolutely. Did you um? I, I want to get to the Magna Carta, uh, Magna Carta record, but when uh, when girls are twerking in the club, do you do you just do you sit back and admire, or do you jump into the mix? I mean, uh, I guess it really depends. Um, you know, some definitely get uh, a couple glances, and then you slowly make your way over there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Uh, in other cases, you, you know, it might be it might be a boys' night. You just hanging out with the guys, and you know, if they come over to us, that's even better. So, ladies, keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> now, dude, I got okay. You're not gonna know this, but this is how we. This is your you in, existing in this hockey world is is different. Mm -hmm. On July 16th, 
the hockey department got an email and it was from Gino Retta who was like uh, you know he's been in he's been a, a television like a sports anchor for like 30 years yeah, and, he, and he works for TSN so Gino Retta and I think the subject line was your name and the body of the email was just was with me you know I got it <laughs> so you had so you had tweeted this line and Gino was like you know you know what does this mean blah 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 like he was he was legitimately dumbfounded that you would tweet that so then like myself and a couple other guys immediately responded it's the name of a song off the map of Jay-Z's Magna Carta yeah, Holy Grail he's just quoting the name of a song some like, people just don't get it man they just don't get it so okay so the Jay-Z album versus the Kanye album which do you which do you like more Jay-Z you like Magna Carta better yeah. than Yeezus. Definitely. Do you like the Yeezus record? I do, but I only like uh, you know probably like three or four songs on that album. Jay Z is I come kind of I'm digging the full thing. Did you go to the concert, Jay Z and Timberlake? I didn't. I wasn't able to. I was I was really disappointed. I heard it was great though. I heard I heard it was dope too. And and um, and some people said that Jay Z's set was shorter than uh, Justin Timberlake's. And but I, and the friends of mine that I know went, they were like. You know, they really were digging what Jay Z was doing in Timberlake. I guess people hadn't seen him in a while yeah, or whatever. Well, but they were kind of when they first came out with the song and I first heard it. I kind of thought JT might have might have ruined it a little bit. But then once about I started, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then once I started uh, listening to it more and more, it kind of grew on me. So you know, I'm not a I'm not a huge Justin Timberlake fan. Like I respect what he does, but I mean, you know, I don't think he you know falls in that genre really. But it made he made it work. Good for him. It um. You know, it's like, it's weird, you know, with the advent of Twitter, when something comes out, it's like hot for six hours. <laughs> and then like the next day, people are already on to the next thing. So like, as far as like Timberlake's album goes, I don't know how many of those songs that people are replaying right now. Mm -hmm. And the dude's album came out, was it was a mat, like when it came out, I think it came out in March. It was huge. Everybody was talking about it. But like, you know, months later... It's like I I love the song Push Your Love Girl. I still play that one. That one that one gets spins for me. But you know, yeah, it just kind of fades. That's what yeah, happens, it sort of man. it sort of does. And he's got a new song called Take Back the Night, which is pretty dope. But uh, on the Jay Z record, what's the song that gets the Magna Carta album? What's the song that you give the most plays spins to? Well, I mean that one that we just mentioned. I like I like suit and tie. Uh, but my favorite, I think it takes the cake. Tom Ford. Tom Ford. You know what somebody t said to me? I think when a it's either my boy the suit or Justin said Tom Ford is the new Paris, yeah. and I'm like I don't I don't quite know if it's it's on that level because Paris is just when that plays it's just it, it <laughs> transforms the club. Yeah, I mean I just I'm I'm just but Tom Ford is big. I love it. I love it, and all the guys like it too. So it's definitely something to look for next year with our HBO series and the whole Winter Classic thing. We're thinking about, you know, like the winning song, like what should it be? Really? Yeah, so like, I mean, that might be a little sneak peek. So That's we'll interesting see. that you guys are having those conversations. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. What what was the winning song last year? Was there one? There was. It was uh, Backseat Freestyle by Kendrick Lamar. Okay, Kendrick Lamar. Did you hear the... He's an animal. Did you... Okay, I, okay, I want to get to Kendrick Lamar. Remind me, because I want to play this game with you. Yeah. I just recently interviewed Kendrick Lamar. Oh, yeah? And I, I played this game with him, and I want to play it with you. Okay. Um, but uh, Kendrick Lamar, have you heard the song Control? Big, uh, big Sean, have, yeah. dude, no, 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 this just came out last night. Oh, did it? So last oh, night, maybe not. Then. Big Sean drops a song on his record, mm -hmm. his upcoming album. Call is it called Control? Hold on, let me just quickly take a look at. It. Um, yeah, it's called Control Hall of Fame, and Kendrick just goes like. So who's, who, whose album is this? Big Sean? So it's Big Sean's album. So it's, And this song, Control, is featuring Big Sean, or sorry, featuring Kendrick Lamar and Jay Electronica. Okay. Kendrick Lamar channels Eminem. Like, even in the way that he rhymes and his and his, his attitude in the song, and then he just starts naming all these dudes that are his contemporaries. Like, I'm, he goes, I got love for my dudes, even the guys I've been on songs with, yeah. but I'm coming to murder you, and I'm coming to make sure that yeah, your fan base doesn't remember you. Because, like, on his album, Good Kid, Matt, it's so chill. Mm -hmm. It's so self-reflective. Well, that's what it is. You can just sit back, throw your feet up, and just listen to some Kendrick and forget about everything Yeah, else, the you know? recipe, swimming pools. Swimming pools. Swimming, yeah, I love that. Don't Kill I love My that Vibe. Too. 
uh, Poetic Justice. He's got a bu- Black Boy Fly. Like I, the one I the one I I'm still listening to is um, uh, Promise That You Will Sing About Me. Promise that. So he's like he's he's singing as his friend who gets shot and like a minute and like thirty seconds into it, like the guy gets shot. But anyway, yeah, he's super got some chill. Solid but, lyrics, man. But Kendrick, yeah, like just holding down the whole West Coast. You know, the game had it for a little bit, and now it's, it just feels like there aren't enough yeah. West Coast dudes. J, J Rock is dope, but like Kendrick is like, he's got yeah. every, I, everything I, I on his shoulders. I just feel like everyone go through, go, goes through like phases, you know what True. I mean? So like they'll, they'll be feeling Kendrick for like a couple months, and then they'll just switch to the next. And then as soon as Kendrick comes out with some new, new stuff, then they'll just be right back on the bandwagon a little bit. But I mean, I, I kind of listen to everybody, so I'm not really... And I wouldn't. I wouldn't really say I have a, a one, two, or three. I just like them all. Did you go to OVO Fest? I went to it for a little bit. Yes, I did. What do you mean for a little bit, for dude? A, it was I, like the greatest well, concert it was, ever. It was the whole weekend, right? So I only went for one day. But the, okay, was the one day the concert? Uh, it don't wasn't think the concert. So. <laughs> Well, there was still, like, uh, there was still music playing, but I think Mo- uh, Drizzy was playing on like Monday. And yeah, yeah. That's when he brought out. I think Tunchi was there too. And he brought out everybody, dude. Yeah, but like why Monday, man? Like I went Sunday. Bring him out Sunday. No. Well, I guess it was supposed to be. A I didn't really thing, know, but, but I was I was all uh, I was all over Veld too, so that kind of. Oh, uh, see weekend. that weekend, like okay, that is too much to do. That's why that you know how crazy that weekend was, and I and I wanted to tweet this, and I'm just gonna say it because I. I I don't know if my bossing, but like that weekend in Canada was Center of Gravity in Kelowna, mm-hmm. was Oshiega in Montreal, mm-hmm. was Veld in Toronto, was Carabana in Toronto. Crazy. It was the it was the Super Bowl for drug dealers <laughs> in in Canada. It like was. It really was. both coasts were like had these huge music festivals and kids were just you know in another on dimension cloud nine. Oh, <laughs> cloud 19 <laughs> so um so yeah Veld, yeah and and go the all well Veld was really expensive well i don't yeah. know i don't know what your situation but Veld was like you know 250 or 300 bucks a ticket i was hearing and 400 wow. for vip like that's wow. a lot just to go to a music festival i know just for a wristband right um so okay so you so you missed like I missed the good stuff. I'm, I'm really disappointed about it too, dude. I so did I. I missed it all. Oh, I was just did. following oh, on Twitter. So, not, not so you don't feel you should feel as bad because yeah, there were only like eighteen thousand people there, and then the <laughs> rest of the world were. I was following it like it was a it was like a show, like it was a mystery, and all these clues were being revealed, and all these people were being revealed, and I'm like, this sounds insane. Oh man, I heard, but I, I was just in. I mean, I wish he did it Sunday because. You know, just after that weekend, I was, you know, I was in rough shape, so I couldn't really, <laughs> I couldn't really make it out Monday. I wish I could have. It was right beside my house too. I mean, I'm just like, you know, right in front of the water there uh, by Ontario Place. So he brought out J Cole, Wale, TLC, and I'm gonna miss a few. Um, uh, TLC, Puffy and Mace, which was like, which was like huge. They they reunited. Uh, Lil Wayne, which nobody thought Lil Wayne could get across the border anymore. Yeah, right? And then, you know, Lil it Wayne, and then, happen. and then, you know, when he, I mean, shut the city down, the power grids blew up, was when Kanye West joined him on stage. Oh, yeah, I heard, I heard lots about that. And, uh, you know, and, and he said, like, after the concert, he hadn't even spoken to Kanye in a long time mm. and, and didn't speak to him before they, or, or see him before they went on stage. So, they hadn't seen each other in a considerably long time until they were actually touching the same stage together. And then Kanye did, uh, you know, he did, um, I think he did New Slaves. And then did he, he did, did uh, some old school. Did Kanye yeah, do some old school? He did. Uh, he ended with um, uh, Wait Till I Get My Money Right or whatever the hell, whatever the name of that song is. Um, can't Tell Me Nothing. Can't oh, Tell yeah, Me Nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was classic. Legit. Have you have you done any music festivals this summer? Because there's like Lollapalooza, there's Bonnaroo well, that your boy. I mean, yeah. Lupo Lupo goes to a bunch of. Yeah, he he's loves like that. The, he's a music connoisseur. He yeah, he, he's. Uh, well, I'm still. I'm. I'm just really the one thing I'm looking uh, forward to is is TIFF. But that's dope. I mean, that's not till uh, early September. September yeah, TIFF is uh, the Toronto International Film Festival, which is probably the biggest event in Toronto yeah. on a yearly basis. Basis, it's. Massive. Yeah, I guess a lot of celebs are showing up this year, so I can't wait for that. But I mean, I, I like all the DJs. I like that whole scene with you know Digital Dreams and and Vel. Did you go to that Digital Dreams? I did. I did. Okay. I, I actually, to be honest, I like Digital Dreams better just because the location. I mean, I, uh, how many people are at Vel? What is it like fifty k? 
40 50, 50, 60, I'm not sure. Something like that. Anyways, a digital is like only 20. So it's like, you know, you got a beach. You know how that whole setup at Ontario Place? They yeah. got like a few different stages. And, and it's just better to commute, man. Like I could walk there, walk back, you know, maybe head downtown afterwards. But Vel, it was all the way out and down to you. So it was a hike and a half to try to get out of there. So for, for those that are listening, so Digital Dreams is down by our waterfront in Toronto. We are right on Lake Ontario. We have a... The waterfront could be nicer. It should be nicer. But anyway, we have a waterfront, and Vell takes place at uh, Downsview Park, which is a good 30 minutes northwest yeah. of of uh, down by the lake. And it's just this remote, this huge expanse, which I think they're trying to build like a, a central park type of park up there, I, I, I heard yeah, about I a year ago. To, there's a lot of space, though. Yeah, and it's like there's like an army base up there. But uh, did you do, what was the one where, what was the party where everybody was dressed in white, which was at the Sky Dome? Do you remember that one? I remember hearing or about Swedi it. Oh, yeah. I went to Swedish House Mafia with Loops. Yeah. I, I, I'm not I, really into that so much. Like, I just, I mean, it's just good for the, for, just for the atmosphere, man. Like, a lot of times, like, you know, especially when I went to Digital and Veld, obviously I know some of the bigger guys, but, you know, the guys playing before, I have no clue who they are. I'm just kind of going just to, you know, kind of see the atm atmosphere. Just, people creep. just soak it in. People <laughs> creep, baby. Just people creep. <laughs> Just, you know, people watching is one of the greatest activities oh, ever invented. I love it. I love it. Shout out to uh, Grand Theft. I think he was playing. He was playing either at Veld or uh, Digital Dreams. He's a guy from Montreal who has this crew called Team Canada, DJ, uh, Team Canada, and they're dope. And Grand Theft is uh, a good friend of mine. So you, uh, I saw a picture of you um, golfing this summer with uh, Phil Kessel. Mm -hmm. And when you, have you golfed with him before? I have, yes. And generally, how does that go? Like, who who has the better day, generally speaking? I mean, Phil Phil's a pretty good golfer. He's, is he? Yeah, I mean, he lives in Florida half the year, you know, so he's got a lot of a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> so I mean, Phil Phil can hit it pretty good, but me, I mean, I mean, I'm average. I'm not bad, but I'm not good. I'll probably shoot like you know, 95, 90, 95. What does Phil shoot? Phil's probably like 80. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I mean, at Glen Abbey, we we golfed the pro am right before the tournament actually happened. So the Thursday. We played, and, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday was the tournament. So the the greens and everything was just in prime shape, so it just ate me up. Oh, it did, huh? It just ate me up. How many how many F-bombs did you drop? <laughs> I tried. I mean, there was cameras and stuff falling. Oh, so, long, so you couldn't really... So I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I trust me, I let a few go. I, I, I came, even came close to breaking a couple of clubs, but, you know, it's it's like I'm on the tour. I got to relax like Happy Gilmore, you know, just... <laughs> Just breathe. Why don't you go to your hole? <laughs> go to your hole. Here comes the putter throw. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the story about Charles Barkley? I, it, I think it was a pro am. Maybe it was at Pebble Beach or something. The dude was just giving away one hundred dollar bills. Did you hear that? Who? Charles Barkley. Was he? Just giving away one hundred dollar bills. He gave away like three or four grand that day. Obviously, the, just jo because, eh? just just because. the Johnny Walker was was you know <laughs> as as Biggie and Jay Z went to when the, when the Remy hits the system. That's it. Um, it's over. Have you ever seen? Uh, anything like that before i haven't i haven't i mean that's a first and that's that's only something how were the how were the beer cart girls at glen abbey uh the uh, to be honest they're not memorable because you're like oh there was this one <laughs> there was rachel no, who I, was I, like i don't even think there were beer beer cart girls man like i don't really? even know if that happens on the tour yeah it's not like you know, i think the golfers just walk and they obviously have like water holes and like things you can get like different certain holes you can get drinks at but yeah, come to think of it, I don't even think I saw one cart girl. Mm, that's just, have you played in any like charity? Any of any of I your do. peers? Yeah, golf tournaments I, yeah, this summer. I play, them, uh, I play them all the time. Actually, I just had mine recently last. Uh, oh, congratulations! Last, last Sunday, thank you. It was the first annual. It was a great turnout. I ended up raising like one hundred, almost one hundred and fifty k for what? For three for your, foundations. For your first one. First one. Dude, you're huge, man. Dude, uh, you're, you're, I just gotta thank the people for that. All the sponsors, they were great. They were great. Your your reputation is massive. For the first time out, like that's gross. First annual, man. It was disgusting. Sold out in two weeks. So where where did you have it? Uh, I was at Fire Rock in London. Oh, so it was in, oh, so yeah, you had like Kamoka like, area, yeah. So you had the whole like your whole like NHL like the yeah, NHL crew yeah. that lives well, in London. I mean, I gotta have. I got one in Toronto. And shout out too. to Sam Stout, Sam Stout too. Yeah, UFC, Stout, who's also from yeah I saw him last week. We we actually went to went to Veld together. So he's a, he's a real nice guy, and hopefully he gets uh, you know a couple more cards coming up. Okay, so this is what people should understand about London, Ontario. Creepers like me, Cabral Richards, will drive two hours to go there because. There's a certain talent level 
of 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 the opposite sex that lives in this yes. city. So now, okay, now, okay. So Glen Abbey, prestigious golf course in Canada, one of the most prestigious. They have PGA events there all the time. Uh, and then I'm sure the golf course you had your charity event at was dope. But tell me about the difference in the in the quality of the beer cart girls yeah. at the Pro Am at Glen Abbey. And then the first annual Nazem Kadri yeah, uh, was, charity golf tournament. It was definitely a big difference. <laughs> big difference. I mean, Glen Abbey, that's more, uh, that's more like classy. And I'm not saying mine wasn't, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying it, it's it's. It's know, more it's traditional. Exactly. It's on the tour. I mean, you're golfing with pros, and you know they've been around, so you obviously got to keep it uh, G-rated. So, uh, but at my tournament, I you mean, guys had like a car wash. <laughs> yeah, there was. We had we had uh, we we had girls at every hole, pretty much, just handing out drinks or food or whatever it was. Some, uh, cart girls coming around, and that's just half the fun dude, for them too. Why couldn't I get an invite to that, dude? Hey, buddy, you're coming next year. I already got you chalked in. <sighs> <laughs> no, like I, I I'm totally I totally have fear of missing out disease, fearing miss fear of missing out syndrome right don't now. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll hook you up next year. Two weeks, man. It was done. Like I was like shocked myself. I was still trying to recruit some people. Next thing you know, my mom's telling me that, you know, that's it. So it's kind of happened fast, you know. Did you have like a similar <clears throat> crew of characters that? Do you play at Drew Doughty softball yep. tournament this year? Mm -hmm. So do you have like the same guy? Yeah, pr pretty, pretty much. much. It's, it's like the same core. We, we all support each other. And, um, you know, that's the good thing about having, you know, so many people in London. It's just, uh, you know, better better commute for everybody. I have uh, I have two more things to get to. Yeah, let's do it, man. Whatever you want. Um, now, I, I saw this, uh, I saw this, um, this video. <clears throat> and uh, it's on this website called... Uh, dangerousminds.com like I don't know if this happens to you where you're fall into a uh, a YouTube rabbit hole for like <laughs> half an hour or 45 minutes yeah. or an hour oh, you absolutely. just click in the suggested videos and then all of a sudden like like a good portion of your day is gone you got nothing to do man that's a great idea and that happens to me I used to be I used to go like I would save it for Sunday nights I would go on world star <laughs> That's it. A Sunday night. Every <laughs> yeah, Sunday night. Just a casual Sunday. Yeah, dude. I from like two AM to like four AM and just troll through World Star. Um, uh, but it happens frequently during the week on YouTube. Anyway, I saw this video from Dangerous Minds uh dot com and it was uh they do these social experiments. Well, now I gotta see it. And uh one of the social experiments was they had these two young twenty somethings. They had a guy and a girl. And uh, you know, there's that there's that expression where like a guy can go ask ten random women women to sleep with him, and maybe one will say yes, but a girl can go ask ten random guys to sleep with her. All ten will say yes. Eleven will say yes. <laughs> Eleven will say yes indeed. <laughs> so, uh, so these two videos. So the the girl goes out. And she asks, and she's cute. She's like, here, I'll bring it up. Like for straight you. up, just ass. Yeah, like they're on like some beach community. Okay, so this is the girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, like she's cute, right? Yeah, not bad. And um, and that's the guy. And this is the guy who's like, you know, he's like a pretty average dude. He's tall. And yeah, yeah. So she asks fourteen guys, like, hey, you know, like my house is over here, like blah blah blah. Seven of the fourteen say yes. Seven. Seven of the fourteen. But to, but of the guys that said no, three or four of them were with their girlfriends. Oh. So you almost have to like strike those guys off oh, the table. So oh, that really, shouldn't have even been allowed. Well, right. I guess how she gonna know, right? Right. So yeah. it's really like seven of ten. Okay. So then the other video plays, and the the male asks one hundred. Women, one hundred, one hundred women. What a day! What a shift! To, like, but that's like that's he's got you know he's got cojones the size of watermelons. <laughs> so he asked one hundred different girls to uh, to sleep with him. Do you want to guess on how many girls said yes? I don't know. Is it high? Is it high? It's I low. Just, I just want to get probably just, probably like less than ten percent. Zero. 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 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Zero. I, I bet that uh, took a shot at his confidence that day. But I, I mean, I think it was, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, obviously, because it's fully based on what you look like and what you say to them. Yeah, it's physical that's attraction a, right. right off the bat. And that's what they're processing. So they're just looking at you and they're just like, mm, yeah, no. <laughs> Not feeling it. <laughs> Not Maybe feeling tomorrow. It. Not even one girl out of 100. Yeah, like didn't even say buy me a drink. Like, nothing, <laughs> like, nothing like that. No chance. And he's pretty funny too, and like, that's the thing for for blue collar fat guys like me. It's all about char, <laughs> and I just have yeah, to use and humor and humor. Well, that's yeah, what it's all about char. Yes, and I got to crack a few jokes, and yeah. that's the only way I'm getting in. I'm not pretty like you <laughs> and uh, and your contemporaries. So here's a question for you, not based on this because I know that you don't do this, but when you're in, when you're out with your with your boys. And you know how, like, when you meet girls or, like, you know, there's, like, there's sort of a, a protocol of questions that people ask each other when, they're, when they meet each other, like, you know, what's your name? What, and then there's, like, what do you do? Yeah. How early in conversation with, like, a new girl do you, do, do you reveal to them what you do for a living? Okay, so here, here's the thing. I'm going to do it in two parts because yeah. okay. Canada will be different than the United States. Way different. Based on what you do for a living. Way different. Okay, so if you're in, I'm going to say, if you're in the United States and you're out, you're on the road, you're in okay. Boston or Minnesota, Minneapolis, or whatever, and you're meeting some young ladies, uh, so how, how early in that, that conversation or transaction do you reveal what you do for a living? Are we saying, are we saying like two minutes? Are we yeah. saying like five minutes? <clears throat> ten I minutes? Mean, you know, we don't we don't try and you know pull that card out. It so like if it happens and it happens, but usually, well, if it's in the states, then they really don't have a clue. So it's like you kind of got to work a little more game. So, and then give me a time. Well, give nah, it, Give me a, give me a time. Time. Like at what point does it come out? Well, well, listen. Why? Well, I, uh, well, I play professional hockey, or I'm a professional. Probably, do you probably, say you're a professional? Do you say in no, US? when they if if they're coming back with you? That's probably when it's. When it's time to, that's when they find out. <laughs> that's not, <laughs> so wait, do you say that you're a professional no, hockey player no, or a professional I, athlete? No, usually, uh, sometimes I'll just make something up, like especially if I'm in Canada and like someone asks. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I want to oh, save I'm the Canada. Ahead. Okay, okay I want to save bad. Canada because I, I know it would be different. No, okay, so it's so a U.S. In the states, if I'm, if she's gonna know, then she'll know when it's just me and her. <laughs> right. Okay. So not. That's okay. It. Okay. Fine. So, but but it, as you're conversing, like, do you? Huh, well, they, okay. Um, if she asks you, then what do yeah. you say? Well, yeah. You, yeah they, if she asks you, I just kind of say I play hockey. Ah. And then I mean, if she continues to ask questions, I'll answer her questions. But you know, sometimes you know, in the states, it just kind of goes flat from there, and then I just head over to the dance floor. <laughs> 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 and then that's it. Okay. So now, so. <clears throat> Okay, so the cachet in the United States for hockey players is a lot different than it is in Canada, where you guys are like rock stars. Yes, okay. sir. So when you're in Canada, and uh, and out, obviously outside of Toronto, where you have all kinds of visibility, but if it's like a Montreal or a Winnipeg or an Edmonton or Ottawa, let's say, whatever, I just named all, pretty, pretty much named all the freaking cities. But how how fast how soon does that come up in conversation well i mean usually it's just right away because normally they they know before you even speak to them <laughs> so and then when they find out i mean it's i just like in the states it's you know it's a lot more just relaxed even though i love our canadian fans you know you know diehards they're awesome but in the states you can kind of relax and you know take your cap off and just kind of enjoy your night in Canada it's a little different it's just like kind of everyone's watching you do you feel stuff. like you're in a fishbowl a little yeah, bit yeah a little bit I mean it seems like everyone knows everybody but I mean usually in Canada it, it comes out a lot quicker than it does in the states so uh, okay so when you're in this so okay because you're in a fishbowl it's like it might be harder to operate to maneuver because exactly. you just feel all these eyes yeah. on you then you got to be like talking. you got to be like uh in the movie goodfellas you got to go out the kitchen yeah. or like or <laughs> you like, just got to be straight for a little while and just you know like tell them later who's the guy that just comes right out like it's almost it's like he's got his phone in his one hand and he's like i play hockey yeah. like that fictional card in the other hand who likes to I mean, let it be known. No, I don't think anyone's really, really like that. But uh, you know, some a lot of guys use you know the the whole Twitter thing, and 
you know, once you use the Twitter thing, you're pretty much, you know, you're verified, and it basically says who you are once you go to your page, obviously, so <laughs> it's kind of just like a, a dead giveaway, you know, so a lot of, you know, a lot of guys tend to use that, and I mean, it, it's it's a good way, I guess, because a lot of people have it, you know, a lot of, a lot of people. Do you spend more time on Twitter or Instagram? Um, lately, probably Instagram. Yeah, it's just like... But I mean, because it's just straight pictures. Yeah. yeah and, and now the whole video thing's coming out too. That's it's out. It's well, here. it's already out. I yeah. mean, that's that's what I mean. And that's uh, that's also there's just a lot of things to do on social media, <laughs> man. You know? Just a lot of uh, things even, to look at. Can't really even put a number on it. And everything is just out there. You know what kind of irks me? It's just because I'm a creeper. It's like when you like you like you're on Instagram and you, you know, you might see someone tagged in a picture and you go to their pro and it's locked. And it's protect. You can't. You can't creep on their pictures. I'm like, so I have to follow you to in order to. I'm like, oh man, (laughs) it's not worth it. Yeah, it's just for. And this is only for other creepy men like me, (laughs) because I'm a creeper, and that annoys me when I can't just look at the front page and scroll through and look at ten to. 12 to 100 photos of you and your girls in bathing suits and, I mean, and it's, at the lake. <laughs> Those are the ones you just creep down until you start seeing maybe <laughs> just a little bit of skin, then you're like, whoa. You're like, oh, okay, yes. Uh, I'd like to, I'm going to, can't, you can't ever comment on the follow, photos. Follow. Yeah. So here's a hypothetical for you before I get to this last thing. If you're in Dallas and you're at a, you know, a steakhouse or whatever, and you know you you got a few days before you actually you guys touch down on like a Tuesday, but you don't play till like a Friday. Okay. So you go out Wednesday night and you're with you know your guys and eating and steak whatever, and you and you see a you know a group of young ladies and you, you guys start to to talk or whatever and say they're they're Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Okay, so this is the hypothetical. Okay. Now they're they're like they have like. Extremely high cachet. Yes, As in, there's like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, there's like the Laker girls, there's like the Dolphins cheerleaders. Uh-huh, like there's like yeah. they're in the top five of like Definitely. the hottest collection of girls in America. So you meet some Dallas Cowboys cheaters or cheerleaders, excuse me. Um, how soon do you tell them that? Uh, like you're vibing with. Uh, how soon? You know you're vi- you're vibing okay. with uh, her name's uh, well, Priscilla. No, no, Priscilla's <laughs> not a. Her name's like, uh, like, so Sophia, <laughs> Sophia, Mercedes. So, yeah, Mer- yeah, Mercedes, uh, Mercedes. Uh, uh, you know, her last name is like Velasquez. <laughs> Mercedes that's, Velasquez. That's, that's modeled now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so if we're in Dallas and we see them eating, you, right? You, and you're at the same restaurant or same lounge and you're eating, and then the groups, they, you know, the groups, uh, they start to mingle. And you start, you know, you're, 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 you yeah, know, there's like three the around fun, you. That's when the fun starts. Right. Yeah. So then, so are you going to go with one of your aliases? Like you, you know, I used to say I used to work yeah. for, I'd say I work for UPS <laughs> and I'd say I was just like an IT guy. <laughs> and they just buy it. right? Yeah. Girls will buy it. Cause then, cause you, you just, I don't know. It's, it's, you have fun hey, with it too. Hey, you're a hard worker, you know, honest right. man. Right. You think, you know, oh, well, he's, he's got some uh, technical know-how. He's probably good with computers. And, <laughs> there you go. You and he doesn't look like an IT guy, so oh, this could be like an interesting experience for me. So now you. I mean, if 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 it's some Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, you know, obviously if you're talking with them, you know, they're gonna ask you why you're down there, and you know, right, because you don't sound like Americans. No, I mean, no, definitely not. And you know, a lot of us, I guess, to to some Americans, don't look like hockey players. I mean, I'm sure I don't look like a much of, <laughs> much of a hockey player, but I mean. Um, you know, that being said, so it, it'll probably come out a lot earlier than than usually, especially in the States, and especially if you're dealing with some ta- Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, mm. you know, you need every advantage you can get, so, <laughs> you know, why not? Because it's, it's, it's like a certain, it's like when you get to that level, like the pool of, like, hotness just gets smaller and smaller, True. and then, and, and it's weird how, like, you have, you know, some dudes that, you know, like, you look at, like, basketball wives or those kind of shows and like some of the women are with you know they their thing is like athletes or just yeah. really famous people yeah exactly and, that's, and they just operate in those circles and so you gotta watch out for right i mean that's that's exactly what you have to like caution yourself with but at the same time i mean if you're in the states you know it's less likely you know for something like that to happen than you know in canada 
just because you know the facts because you guys facts. yeah their your spotlight is a yeah, lot I mean, bigger you know, in they, they don't they, i mean we're in dallas it's not like you know they don't care much about the toronto maple leafs they like the dallas cowboys and you know the houston texans and, right you know stuff like that so i mean at the end of the day you know if you you know just smile smile and wave and just you know <laughs> throw that charm on you'll be fine who's the guy that you didn't know was as charming as he was but he's like in a room he's like like people wouldn't think like this guy has got he, he, he's like he's like an alpha in a room and he's got a lot more charm than you think who's that guy who's that guy on our team I think I mean I think I think reamer has got to be up there yeah yeah I mean like you, you, you look at the guy and he just kind of you know just seems a little quiet and kind of just there but you know when uh, when when the females start start coming up he steps his game up a little bit. <laughs> I, mean, I mean he has to he has to From and it, and it's a lot different than you know being in Philadelphia where he was before coming to Toronto you know, it's I don't, don't want to say this but <laughs> You know, a dude. There, there's a a dude who has who um, who had m way more charm than I thought. Like, had just ever known. Like the first time was Jared Stoll. Jared Stoll. Right, and he's not okay. like he's not like a star. Yeah. I mean, he's a great guy. Yeah. But like in a room, he's got a lot more charm than than you would ever think just yeah. by watching him play hockey. Cause is, he's, is he married? Is, he, no, he's, he's not, not married. married right? No, yeah. no, he's single. <laughs> well, he's, well, he, he's he's not married. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Biz once said to me, uh, Biz once said, if you're not if you're not married, you're basically single. <laughs> Coming from Biz, man, I just, dude, I hit him up the other day. <laughs> Biz was, is always good for some one liners like that. He's always <laughs> he good for those. I was like, Biz, that girl in your Instagram, is that your chick? I, I think I I don't know. Well, you can just go look on his Instagram. And goes, he goes, he goes. Uh, He's like, yeah, we're like, he's, you know, they're the friends. Yeah. And I said, is she cool? Like, because uh, she's like a 13 out of 10. Have you seen this girl? I haven't, no. She's unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, I'm just. There, there, there's some line around. Toronto, well, but he, man. Oh, Come is there now. ever. Biz is another guy yeah. who, well, his, 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 his persona on, in social media is that like, he's the funniest. He's so funny because he takes shots at himself before yeah. anybody I mean, else. Even in real life, this is a great guy. He's he, he's he's definitely good for a few laughs. Dude, are you you got to come to I'm having a party on the weekend. I'll uh, be there. The summer party. <laughs> I'll be there, man. I'm just going to say that Biz once attended the summer party and just left with the baddest the baddest chick. Really? All the baddest chick. I'm excited. You're talking about TO like for those uh for those people you know, there's listening. You know, south of the border, who haven't been to Canada. There's you basically go to like, I should say three places, but you basically go to two. You go to Vancouver, or you go to Toronto. Exactly. That's where that's your those are your entry points into Canada. Yeah, there's no in between. There's no. In between. No, that there's like Montreal is dope, and the women in Montreal are legit. Yeah, Montreal, Ottawa, you can. You know, it's kind of all right. I'm, the Ottawa, the Ottawa Strip is pretty fun too, man. Right. What is that called? The the market. Yeah. The market. Yeah. yeah. Last thing, we mentioned uh, Kendrick Lamar. So I interviewed him. Uh, he was in town uh, Caravana Weekend, uh, and he did a show at the Sound Academy. And then he went the next day to Lollapalooza. So uh, Kendrick Lamar has this song called, uh, I'll just say, Please Don't Kill My Vibe. So I said, Kendrick, um, you know, you're so self-reflective, and this interview is going to come out in a couple of weeks. I just want to, I'm just going to give you a list of types of people and you tell me if they kill your vibe. And Nas, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the same list <laughs> right. as I gave to Kendrick. So the first one is the one upper, the, the, the guy in the room that when you're telling a story, he has to tell a story that's like better than yours. He wants to, Oh yeah, that's a buzz kill. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a vibe killer for sure. He's either, he's either like, it's like, it's either sneakers or car or girl or yeah, party. It's something, just something has to be better than yours. Yes. Okay. So that kills your vibe. Uh, what about bandwagon jumpers? Yeah, that's a vibe killer too. They I mean, weren't there. They weren't there when it was yeah, when the yeah, success like, wasn't there. You like loyal people, man. That's just how the world works, you know. Loyal, trustworthy people. And if you're a bandwagon jumper, then that's killing vibes for sure. Okay. What about the dude? And I and I got a good laugh out of this one. What about the dude that responds in a text message with LOL or uses <laughs> LOL? 
I mean, do you use LOL? Yeah, I do. Come on, do. do you really? Sometimes, sometimes. So I, I'm with, not wait, like, but with other dudes or with girls? Because girls, basically, there are no rules. You can do whatever when yeah, you're texting yeah. with girls. Uh, no, dudes, no, dudes, no. Only with females. And like, I won't even turn. I'm, I'm a. I like to use when I'm using the whole texting game and whatever BBM or whatever you want to use. I like those little uh, emoticons. Yes, <laughs> with those faces, I like little blush face and the kiss face. <laughs> That's all me. <laughs> so Kendrick said LOL was okay, yeah. but the thing that he didn't like that kills his vibe is when dudes respond with just K. Oh, like, uh, on my way, K. The one letter? It's yeah, terrible. just the one letter. At and he's like... put an O in front of it. You know? That's what he said. That's what he, yeah. And that, that, that made me laugh. I'm a ha-ha-ha guy. Or if it's re like if it's a legit belly laugh, then it's a ba-ha-ha-ha-ha. Yeah. Uh, and, and based on how many ha's I... Respond with will tell you how hard yeah, I actually yeah. laughed in real oh, life. I agree. I agree. That's that's like standard, you know. Like if if obviously someone, you know, sends you a couple text messages just ha 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 ha, then you know you <laughs> then you know you got them laughing, you know. So and when I when it's just like a little like a smirk or like it might be like a snort, I just give a he he. Yeah, but not like a, a ha -ha. bad joke. Like a bad joke, like d it gives you like a couple dots. <laughs> yes. Um. And uh, what about the guy that? Uh, that claims he's from the city, but then the more you find out that he's actually from the suburbs, but he's trying to rep for the si from city. Like oh, I'm well, from Toronto. I'm like, oh, where where in Toronto? Oh, I'm well, I'm I'm from Pickering. <laughs> You're not from Toronto. You're from freaking Toronto. Pickering, dude. You're from the 905. I mean, that's uh, for me. That's not so much of a vibe killer because that's them. I mean, you just do you. If you want to tell people you're from the city and you're not, then go ahead. But I mean. You know, I'm I'm a city boy for sure. I can't do the whole suburb country thing. That's that's just not me. And, um, you know, there's a lot of Western guys uh, on the team that that would kind of rather that maybe. But I'm a city boy at heart, so you know, Toronto's my home. Nice. Um, the last one I asked him was Dwight Howard, which really has no uh, relevance unless you are. Are you a basketball? Do you watch basketball? Yeah, I'm a Laker fan too. Are you actually? Yeah. Okay, so then Dwight Howard. So you probably already know my answer. <laughs> Did he kill your vibe? He killed my vibe. I don't know. He was just, I mean, you know, Dwight, why you got to be such a baby? Just you're playing with one of the best basketball players in the world. Just embrace it, man. You know, stop being so selfish. It's got to be kind of hard, though. No? Yeah, it does. I mean, who, who, but he's is the it, Mamba. You know, he's the Mamba. The is, there an, is there an equivalent? <sighs> basketball and hockey are so different, but is there... Is there an equivalent in hockey of like a guy who's? Ju I mean, I guess Ovechkin is just a scorer, and Kobe is yeah. pretty much just a scorer. He's not really, you're not giving, you're not giving, getting seven rebounds mm. or five assists a game like a like a LeBron James yeah. or even Kevin Durant line. Is there an equivalent? Can there? I mean, I don't know if there is because, like you said, it's just so different. And in, in, in basketball, it just seems now it's just like. You know, everyone's moving in threes or twos or like just trying to make an all star team. Right. right, that's, right. Like, that's like the only way you're going to win an NBA championship. I don't really think there's a similar case in hockey, but. I saw once last thing. Um, now, what I, does this bother you? When, uh, when Jonathan Taves was doing his post celebration or post celebratory interview, um, I'm not sure how accurate this was, but I saw this on the Book of Faces. During the interview, he kept saying we, we, we. He said we like 20 or 25 times mm -hmm. as far as, you know, Chicago beating Boston to win their um, uh, Stanley Cup, the second Stanley Cup in like four years. Now, when LeBron was being interviewed after the Miami Heat won its NBA championship, it's back, it's second of two uh, consecutive championship, on the podium, he was saying I a bunch of times. Mm -hmm. Now, Taves and LeBron... I don't. I think that it's 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 apples and oranges, and certainly their effect on the game is also apples and oranges. But does that um, would you is that indicative to you of how hockey is and of how basketball is? I mean, a little bit. I think uh, you know. I think uh, you know. Just just Taze, like we're in hockey, we're like taught to be like that. You know, like it's no. You know, if you if you get caught in a press conference or an interview saying I too many times. And you know your ass is gonna get chewed out in the back. So, wow, really? That oh, actually yeah. happens? Oh yeah, man. And like that's one of the first things. Like especially in Toronto, when you come to Toronto, they give you like a little media seminar. Like when I first got here, I was you know 18, and they're giving me this media seminar, telling me things to say and things not to say, and how to stand in your interviews, and if not to wear a hat. And there's just a lot of things you got to think about, but. I mean, I think that's just the difference in hockey and basketball. I mean, LeBron's obviously a great player, best player in the world, but 
you know, you know, I just think he, you know, he maybe he wants a little too much credit, and he deserves it because people have harped on him. You know, he he's gotten criticized, and he just slap people in the face with his championship, <laughs> which is how you're supposed to do Take it. Take these. But then after you do that, you know, give your teammates some, some you know, respect. And, you know, we's the word to use in hockey. So there's definitely no eyes. But there is an eye in win. There is. And, uh... And there's a couple, there's an eye in, or a couple eyes in championships, and yeah. LeBron has two. He can do whatever he wants. And, um, and I hope, uh, uh, for your sake and, uh, your journey's sake that there are, uh, there are a couple, those two eyes are in, uh, in your future <laughs> as, uh, in a championship. I guess they don't say championship, they say champion, they say. Well, they're the one Championship, eye. it's all the same, I mean, you know. Uh, Nas, I appreciate your, your candor and uh, your honesty. I, I did have a lot of fun in this conversation. This is hey, a good first well. conversation. We've we never well. had an extended conversation we before, so this is, this is pretty cool. Um, so are you, on, are you on, I know on uh, Twitter you're Kadri43, mm -hmm. all one, or is it Kadri underscore? I think, I think it actually might be 43 before the Kadri. I think it's 43 underscore Kadri. For, excuse me, I'm saying it wrong. 43 underscore Kadri, and then on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, I think it's just 43 Kadri. No underscore. No underscore. I don't Do think. It, I'm going to check that. <laughs> no, I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure it's just 43 Kadri. And okay. Then, and then Twitter is, get that underscore in there. So uh, for you guys that want to follow his life, if you don't already, click those buttons because he's a pretty honest dude, and uh, he's a, a joy to interact with. Thank you very much for coming down, dude. Thank you for listening.